Welcome, everybody, to a special episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I am your host, Brad Jost, and if you didn't already figure this one out, we are going to be discussing Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous, uh, giving you our full non-spoiler review. Um, now, I, I'm not alone today. I do have a buddy right next to me here um, who was able to check out Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous along with me in full on Netflix before the release. So that was uh, that was really awesome. And we did that just yeah. so we could bring you guys some really, really fun content. So he's talking already. Why don't we go ahead and welcome in my buddy Tom Fishenden to discuss it with me. Now, now Tom, um, I know we've been under embargo for a little while here. And, uh, you know, we've been wanting to discuss the show, but we haven't done that in any way. But uh, are you excited to, to finally start talking about Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous now? Yeah, yeah I am. Um, like I was saying to you before we started, obviously I think everyone's so busy at the moment with everything that's going on that it's yeah. kind of not really been something where I've struggled not talking about it. Um, but I'm kind of at the point where I'm really excited to see how fans react to this now and I'm really excited to get to be a part of that conversation. So it's going to yeah. be cool. Yeah, we had a few people early on just asking us for details and stuff like that on Twitter and we're like, no guys, can't say anything. <laughs> Not yet. Be patient. Uh, but, you know, before we get too deep here, I just wanted to give a huge thanks for that opportunity. Uh, you know, to Universal, DreamWorks, Netflix, and Amblin, uh, just for letting us watch the series in advance. You know, it, it means so much to myself, and I'm sure to you as well, Tom, uh, yeah. for, for them to be able to trust us to to watch the show and, and, of course, not say anything in advance and and hold our thoughts. So thank you so much uh, for just letting us be a part of this early screening, uh, you know, time period here. So thank you. Yeah, I agree with um, that. I was kind of sat, like pinching myself the whole way through it. It's been really <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, so a few details here. Um, uh, also, I did not put this in our notes, but I know, uh, what is it? CampCretaceous.com, right? They have uh, a nice uh, yeah, like new right fancy website going on there. So that's pretty awesome. Go check out that in the meantime. Uh, we have, let's see, we have some cast members and stuff we want to go over. So this is uh, Paul McKell Williams as Darius. Sorry if I, I butchered the pronunciations. I am never good at that stuff. Uh, we got <laughs> Ryan Potter as Kenji. Uh, Jenna Ortega as Brooklyn, uh, Rainy Rodriguez as Sammy, uh, Kowser Muhammad as Yaz, uh, Sean Giambrone as Ben, Jamila Jamil as Roxy, and Glenn Powell as Dave. This is a show from DreamWorks Animation with Universal Pictures and Amblin Entertainment as the production companies. Uh, the series is executive produced by none other than Steven Spielberg, Colin Trevorrow, Frank Marshall, Scott Creamer, Aaron Hammersley, and Lane Loris, with Scott Creamer and Aaron Hammersley as the showrunners. Um, so today, what we're gonna do is we 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 broke down, all right, our discussion points into like these little bullet points for you guys. Uh, so we we don't try to tread on any kind of spoiler territory. So please, you know, feel free to watch this without being, you know. Uh, spoiled, I guess, by anything that we're going to be discussing. Yeah. Um, if you are looking for spoilers, stay tuned. Probably sometime next week, we'll have a big in-depth conversation for you guys uh, with all those fine details that you're looking for. <laughs> Trust me, there's plenty that you're going to want to hear. But yeah. for now, you know, for now, because the show hasn't dropped yet, it's dropping on September 18th. Uh, we just wanted to give you guys a little non-spoiler review so you can kind of check out what's going on. Um, so we're going to be discussing today the tone of the show the characters, um, the story in a very generalized way, nothing too, too deep, um, you know, nothing more than you, what you're seeing in the trailers and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to talk about the visual style, uh, canonical elements, and uh, the score, and maybe some potential issues. We'll find out. <laughs> so we've got a lot to discuss. We're not going to try to keep you guys here too, too long. Like I said, we don't want to get too in-depth. We just want to kind yeah. of cover our basis here and uh, discuss what we love about this show or maybe what we don't like. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but anyway, Tom, what do you think? Uh, starting off with this first uh, point here, the tone. What what are what yeah. were maybe like some of your expectations going in and then how do you think it paid off? So I think going into it, like with any kind of project like this, I was kind of expecting it to be um very very toned down and watered down and um, because obviously this is a kids animation first and foremost mm -hmm. and i think we've all kind of gone into this with that kind of expectation um but actually i was pretty surprised you know there are some darker moments in this which are actually kind of genuinely 
I, I don't want to say scary because there's never anything that's particularly that scary, mm -hmm. but there are moments which kind of equal some of the action sequences that you see in the films. Um, sure, which yeah. That, was cool to see. Exactly. I think like they, they really lean into a lot of those tense moments. Um, so there was at times where I felt like very tense about the show. And, you know, a lot of those moments tended to be, you know, surrounded by darker things or darker yeah. elements. So I was I was very pleased with with those moments as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that, definitely. And I think to kind of come off of the back of that as well, something that really impressed me um, was the way that they used off-screen events. So obviously in film mm -hmm. in general, you can use off-screen events to communicate a lot of things if a fast-paced story is taking place. Um, but in this one, they used that as a way to still kind of touch on some of the darker events. Um, sure, so there's yeah. a couple of sequences at the Indominusism, for example, which I'd recommend you look out for when you're watching it. Because actually they do do some stuff that isn't too far off what you would see in the films, um, yeah, which yeah. I thought was really, really cool. Um, I would say overall, it's definitely a lighter kind of tone to Fallen Kingdom. And I'd say it kind of sits quite happily in almost that first half of Jurassic Park uh, where you've got a lot of that kind of wonder and kind of that awe. That's kind mm -hmm. of sort of the main theme throughout, I would say. Um, kind of the beauty of the dinosaurs, if you like. Sure. But equally, there are moments that kind of feel a little bit like that emergency bunker sequence, that Dilophosaurus <laughs> sequence. Um, but they're just not quite to the extent that the scenes in the films are in terms of those dark moments. Sure. Um, so... I, th I think overall I'd really describe this as kind of a happy middle ground for Jurassic fans where they're able to um, put in a lot more kind of darker moments than I anticipated. Um, and actually, tonally, it's very much kind of in line with what we've come to expect from the films at this point. Yeah, I, I kind of like the way I looked at it um, was, you know, this is it's supposed to be a show directed at kids, right? So it is, yeah. uh, you know, it's animated. Not everything animated is directed at kids, but mm -hmm. I think in this case, this is what it was for. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily made for older audiences, but it does appeal to us, I think, um, as yeah. fans from the original, like you're saying, Jurassic Park, with moments like, dar like darker moments with the Dilophosaurus and, you know, uh, the T-Rex just ripping people apart in that movie. Like, so, <laughs> like, stuff like that, you know, we're, we're used to stuff like that. Kids are not, necessarily. So I think the way that they handle, you know, stuff like that off screen and 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 in, in certain ways, I think that helps. Um, and it, it yeah, definitely, like, definitely. lessens the the harsh reality of what's going on yeah. in a way, but like you still, it's still impactful in that sense. But um, I do think the show, you know, generally is like very happy and playful. I, I think there's a yeah. lot of fun to the show. It's very lighthearted at times. And I think it's, uh, it's pretty happy. It, it, so I was, I was, you know, surprised with the mix here because it's like I said, happy, it's playful. Um, it's very tense. Uh, it can be yeah. scary at times, you know, it, it can be very emotional as well, which was something that I didn't really expect was, the the emotional punch that this show gives at times so no, yeah. i was i was really pleased with, with, that. with yeah i was really pleased with that like uh you know just all over the place it's like a it's a roller coaster ride i feel like that's like very stereotypical you know it's a roller coaster yeah. just so <laughs> it was a roller coaster of emotions and i was very pleased with that i think you put that quite nicely actually there's um a lot more emotional weight in this than i anticipated mm. and i know that you've mentioned it later on um but there is one moment in particular where i think i did actually tear up and it's mm -hmm. it's just it's <laughs> it's a kid's show so you, you can't do much you know you've kind of got to keep the story always moving forwards in these kind of productions yeah. um but the way that that certain scene was handled i was really impressed with that because i was like this is a kid's show but actually you've got a level of emotional depth that a lot of films manage to miss. Um, so I definitely think there's an interesting balance of all kinds of different tones in this, really. Yeah, I think, you know, we keep mentioning kids show, but don't let that scare you as something to say yeah. like, oh, this is not for you. It's like I said, it appeals to to a mass amount of people. It's a wide audience. And I think, you know, any Jurassic fan should definitely be sitting down to watch the show. Um, you know, if they're yeah. worried that it's a kid show, don't be. 
Um, you know, like I, like we just said, there's a lot of middle ground in there for, uh, you know, longtime fans, also kids. I think some kids might, you know, have some of a hard time with some of those scarier elements. But, you know, it's like we say with the, the films. And, and I know something that we talked about with like Jurassic World live tour. A lot of people had a question of like, is my kid going to be too scared? You know, use your judgment. Um, but I think yeah. I don't think it's going to be too scary for many, many kids. I think uh, a lot of kids will have a lot of fun with this one. Um, yeah. So and I think a lot of the reason is is the characters here. So, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a lot of mass appeal to uh, a wide, you know, um, amount of people here. So, for instance, uh, there's there's a lot of stereotypes in this show, I think. Yeah. So and I, that's not to be unexpected. I think that's pretty expected with a lot of shows, you know, and a lot of films and stuff like that. It's you have you have these like typical tropes for uh, for anything and, and specifically Jurassic as well. You know, there's. There's always a person or a kid in Jurassic who knows all the facts and knows everything and, you know, knows yeah. everything about dinosaurs. And that is no different here. So we have that dino geek. We have a, you know, popular guy and a girl, uh, a sporty. Uh, there's a sporty girl in the show. There's an af a kid who's always afraid, um, people who don't fit in. So I think um, yeah. I think the show, you know, kind of gets everything in there um, while not being too stereotypical in in those characters uh and and the things that they end up doing and the way that they are throughout the show so while those stereotypes are there and the tropes are there i think they they expand upon that pretty well um with a lot of these yeah, kids definitely. you know doing things that uh, are maybe out of their element or you know doing things that uh you know make them change a lot throughout the show so uh, yeah. i was pretty happy with the the transition of these characters throughout the rest of the show yeah, I'd agree with that. I think it's interesting because obviously the kids are essentially a vessel for you to experience dinosaur action. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what it boils down to at the end of the day. But actually, there's a lot of really, really good development in the kids. Um, mm -hmm. And they kind of do have different arcs across the series and some really interesting plot points. Um, again, coming back to that one that I know we'll mention later, but there's just so many sort of different moments that kind of set these characters apart in their own right, which is quite cool. And I like that we actually take the time to hear more about sort of each character's background, how they've mm. got to Camp Cretaceous, what their life has been like. Yeah. Um, Cause it yeah. kind of sets them out as a group who have got a really, really interesting level of camaraderie to them. Mm. Um, and I, I will say as well, um, I think that, like you said, obviously, we've got the dino geek of the group and everyone <laughs> knows from the trailers that that is Darius. Oh, for sure, um, yeah. And, yeah, I, I feel like he as well is almost like a homage to Tim Murphy in many ways, which is quite cool um, mm. because his love for dinosaurs just echoes through here. And mm. I feel like it's kind of nice because, like you say, with stereotypes – he is what we stereotypically see as a kid in a Jurassic project. Yep. He is Eric. He is Tim. He is Zach and Gray. He represents those characters. So then everyone else kind of breaks the mold and brings something new to the kid stereotype within the franchise, which is quite sure. cool. Yeah, I think, you know, other those other characters do have elements from a lot of these characters that we've seen before as well. But... Uh, they they define themselves and I think they're unique to these, you know, all of these films and the show and everything that we have. Um, Darius himself, he's like you're saying, he's very easy con to connect with. I think he's yeah. he's a well-rounded character. So while he is, you know, the dino geek of the show, like he does, he does so much more than that. And he's a, he's a much more well-rounded character. You know, he he's us. You know, he's the audience yeah. kind of like, you know, in a way, like not, not not really comparison of the character, but Lowry in Jurassic World was like us in a way where we're like, man, that first park was legit, like stuff like that. So he he's easy to connect with in that sense. And also, I want to shout out to Kenji. Um, I found that character really, really funny. I thought it was yeah. I thought it was pretty funny. That was awesome. That was cool. Yeah, I actually. Yeah, I, I thought he was quite cool. And I think he he kind of. Without giving too much away, he fills an interesting role because he knows a lot more than the other kids. Yeah. Um, and so that sets up for some interesting dynamics. Yeah. And I'm 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 easily connecting to like um, to Brooklyn as well, just because like I yeah. constantly have my phone up and I'm like, you know, filming myself. We're doing this right here. We're, we're like, you know, live stream or not live streaming this right now, but it's broadcasting at some point. So yeah. it, it's easy to connect with a lot of these characters. Um, so I think, you know, people watching them will be able to connect with them and they all have their their fun stuff that they go through so um yeah i think the characters are really cool i have um i do i do just want to shout out the two rangers as well 
Uh -huh. um, cause I feel like they are really cool characters in their own rights as well. And they kind of have got a really nice dynamic going between the two of them. Um, well, like, I don't know. They've just got some good banter. I like it. I like oh, the council, kind of, the, the that, uh, camp counselors or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The camp counselors, I, oh, Rangers, same thing. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not like a completely different job. Role no, no. Part. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really like that banter because it kind of feels a lot like real world workplace banter. Like yeah. I could picture myself having that with some of my colleagues. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty awesome as well. I really enjoyed them. Um, you know, it's not like a, a a very huge show. There's like these characters and maybe a few others. So it's, you know, it's pretty self-contained in that. So you get to know and get to love a lot of these characters. So I uh, I enjoyed them all. Um, and the, the story that they're involved with, like I said, we're not going to get too deep. Uh, this is just another, you know, bullet point that we're going to talk about here. Um, what do you think about the story? Um, did you have any... I think we all had some preconceived notions as far as where the show would go. We also had a lot of yeah. questions. Don't answer those questions just yet, but I know we had a lot of questions going in as far as like, when does all this take place and stuff? So what were your thoughts on the, the story overall? Okay. So I'll, I'll kind of give you like a summary that encapsulates <laughs> everything. I sort of bullet pointed it because I think that's the best way of doing it, yeah. which is it's a story that isn't too deep. I think that's fair to say. Um, and it kind of echoes a lot of the previous films in terms of we're on an island, there is set objective, and these are going to be the things that will happen while we attempt to achieve said objective. Um, so in that kind of regard, it is quite familiar to those films that we've seen in the past set on Isla Nublar, obviously, sure. in particular. <laughs> um, but I do feel like there are some really, really interesting moments where they incorporate a few different things that kind of sort of piqued my attention and caught my interest. Um, and also there's a few cool moments which reference the events of Jurassic World. Um, they, they never really go like fully into referencing Jurassic World, um, but there are a couple of cool moments that sort of call out to the events that happen in that film. Um, mm -hmm. um, one which you've seen in the trailers again is obviously the moment where the Pteranodons break out um, which is quite cool. And you do see more of that sequence from sort of their perspective, which is cool to see. So I think overall, um, it's kind of a simple get from A to Z, but the fun really comes into the story where you have all these sort of unique encounters that, that these characters find themselves in along the way, um, just like any other Jurassic film, really. Yeah. You know, I, I mentioned a lot about, you know, how emotional and, and you, you know, we both talked about how dark and, and happy and fun the show can be. So that plays into the story a lot. I, I don't think the yeah. show, you know, kind of like you're saying, it's not overly deep per se, but I think it goes as expected. Um, it does kind of what you want it to do. Um, it, and that does not make it like any less enjoyable or anything. I still think it's very, no, very exactly. enjoyable. Um, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that they touch on. Um, so, I, and I was very happy with how Jurassic it felt because, yeah, uh, you know, like we were saying before about some of these character tropes and stuff like that. Um, there's also, you know, story tropes as well. You know, it, it, it carried a lot of those those things that you see from Jurassic movies with family and and obviously traversing islands. You can't really get away from that. Um, dinosaur attacks and labs and all you know all the stuff that you expect from a Jurassic movie. It, it's all in yeah. here. You know, it's all in here. So I was very happy with that. It didn't feel like it was like some other show that just so happened to be on. Isla Nublar, you know, like they actually went deep at times. And I was I was pretty happy with that as far as like how deep the uh, other stuff went. You know, the story might have not have been too deep, but other stuff that we're, we can't really talk about at the time, uh, you know, <laughs> did get a little deep. So I was I was happy with that. Um, All I will say um, is and I remember making a note to this extent and this kind of teases a little bit about what we can uh -huh. talk about more when we can um, <laughs> is. The people who worked on this show did their homework. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I honestly, like, as far as the story goes, I, I, I didn't have any moments where I was like, oh, you know, they, they didn't really, like, get that for me. Like, they didn't really hit the yeah. mark or they didn't do this. Like, they really did their homework and they, they nailed all these little details and stuff that you you almost wouldn't expect. I mean, we always give high praise to, um, you know, Lego and, and what they do with their shows um, for, for nailing, you know, 
the stuff that fans would like. Um, while the story yeah. is not, it's not canon or anything like that. They always nail it, and I think they did it here as well. It's it's really nailed as far as everything you'd kind of want to see and and how you'd want it to feel. Um, and I, I like it's it's so hard to talk about this story because like I don't want to spoil <laughs> I don't want to spoil any aspect of it. I mean, you know, you see what's in the trailers. I don't want to give away anything else really. Um, there there is like an aspect of how. I don't know, like how the the story starts in a way. I was pleasantly surprised with with like Darius's journey to the island and stuff like that. Yeah. I thought like his his transition, you know, to the island. It was really really cool. Um, I was I was pleasantly surprised with that. Um, I think you know honestly, if you want to go back and revisit old shows, I think we might have even brought up this this way that this happened at one point. So so go check it. Go check out all our past episodes. <laughs> Yep. Um, but yeah. no, but, um, but like I said, I, I, I was surprised by that. I, I liked, um, you know, cause there's always an, like an A story and I, I, I enjoyed the B stories, you know, the side stories, stuff that were going on on the side. Um, I, like I said, I thought there was a lot going on there emotionally and, um, as a Jurassic fan, a lot going on there. So I was pleasantly surprised and happy with the story and, and, and the way things pay off. I think it was really, really cool. Yeah, I think you've summed that up perfectly. <laughs> it's it's so hard to like try to touch on stuff just generally and vaguely without trying yeah. to you know dip dip your toes too much into it. Um, but let's move on to the visual style. I mean, we've we've talked a little bit about you know the tone and stuff like that. But how did the how did the show look to you? Um, obviously, yeah. we got we got um, you know some looks really early on, and I remember uh, I forget what it was. It was probably like a year ago, or or, or even maybe yeah. even a, a little year bit more ago with the poster with the gate and the kids yeah. like looking up at it. So yeah. we got that very very early on, and then you know we got we did get that little teaser trailer that was just like a, a raptor yeah. running around the woods, uh, the jungle, um, and that was it for a very very long time. So we didn't really know what to expect. Of course, we did get you know trailers and stuff like that. But what did you think about the visual style of the show? Did it pay off for you? Is it something that you're you're into yeah um so i had a very very spoiled childhood in terms of the <laughs> fact that i grew up with star wars the clone wars which you okay. are also a fan of oh yeah. um and it, it kind of felt like it wasn't that level of realistic where i feel like clone wars could quite easily be converted to live action um but equally it didn't feel garish it was kind of very, very much in a happy middle ground where the characters definitely have some like interesting, um, I say like anatomical proportions and that kind of stuff to distinguish them from each other. Um, but it's it's nothing that really you sit there and think, oh, that's not realistic, you know? Mm -hmm. So it kind of blends it quite well. Um, and I think the stars here are the dinosaurs, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. When I watched this, I, I was kind of, it sort of gave me the vibes of playing Jurassic World Evolution for the first time. When okay. you look in that game and you see how well the dinosaurs have been recreated, um, mm. this kind of has that same effect where they are definitely cartoony. They've got um, kind of softer outlines and things, um, but it almost feels like they took the ILM models and reverse engineered them here um, with how spot on they look. And I, mm. I do just want to say, because I don't think this is really a spoiler, um, there are some really interesting colour choices throughout this as well, which I thought was really, really cool. Because I feel like in the films with dinosaurs, they maybe perhaps play it a little bit safe sometimes. So you'll mm. get like one version sure. of a dinosaur and that's it. But here they really took advantage of that to add some um, variety, which I appreciated because it adds a lot more visual identity to the dinosaurs in the show as well. Yeah, I was... Uh you know, taken aback a little bit by some of the dinosaurs too. I thought they looked really, really awesome. And, and to the point where yeah. I was like, they kind of shook me with like how cool some of these looked. I'm like, oh yeah. my, like, like I just sit back. I'm like, oh my God, that looks amazing. I can't believe this is the route they went with this one or that one or whatever it is. So I was, I was really blown away by how cool the dinosaurs looked. And like you're saying, they, they, they pretty much could pop right off of this screen and go into a movie. Um, they're not that <laughs> far off. You know, it's not like you're looking at something that's just completely off where, you know, you have a hard time believing that these are all 
part of the same universe or anything. Um, you know, you, you talked about stuff like the Clone Wars and, and, and uh, that visual style. And I think like at times those ones are very rigid and, um, you know, very oh, yeah. stylized in a way, like their character models. These character models, I think, you know, they, they're pretty natural. They, they, feel, they feel real. They feel real enough uh, for animation. So they're not, you know, it's not like a, a one-to-one with the with the humans and stuff like that but i think they're pretty good and and as far as you know we talked I, I mentioned that poster and, and stuff like that from the early days uh when we first heard about the show that whatever was on that poster definitely felt a bit more cartoony than what yeah. we got and and that was very pleasing you know overall when we actually got the trailer and stuff like that to see that you know it wasn't taking a, a route where you have to kind of dismiss how the characters look or anything. You didn't have to do that at all. Like I just watched this, the, 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 the show and I think everything blends well. You know, I think it's going to be awesome to see these things back and forth. And uh, I haven't done it yet, but to watch like, you know, episodes of this show hand in hand with Jurassic world, I think it, it would yeah. blend really well. Um, so I'd yeah, almost the... like to see a super edit. It'd be cool if somebody <laughs> took scenes from Jurassic World and then cut them with scenes from this. That would, that would be really fun. It would be very long, and I would watch the whole thing, yeah. I'm sure. Um, you know, well, some if you ca- guys want a live stream of that, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. It's going to take way too long. Um, and I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think um, overall, I think the animation was really, really good. Um, the backgrounds, the scenery, um Everything looked and felt like Isla Nublar and, and Jurassic World. You know, there was no moment where I was like, oh, that doesn't look like the the visual style. I'm, I, You know, I know yeah. we talked about early on with speculation and stuff about, well, the trees in, in this section of the park. Like, why are they different here? I, I don't really like I'm not trying to get that deep with this. Like, I, I you know, I think everything looked beautiful the way that the the camp, you know, you've seen it in the trailers. It looks so, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, and just, they nailed it as far as visually, you know, it's visually concerned, uh, some side characters and stuff like that don't always look up to par with the other characters and the other things. But I think that's, that's to be expected in a way. A lot of, a lot of animated shows are like that where they, you know, they focus heavily on the main characters, but maybe not, you know, the, the one person you see for like half a second over here or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, yeah. um, but I was, I was very pleased with how everything looked. I thought, I thought it was great. I have no complaints at all, Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of moments where visually they did some really interesting stuff with the lighting and like the the color of the sky or, you know, just just the juxtaposition of the jungle versus the sky and whatever was in the the foreground. I thought everything that they did was was pretty darn cool. So really, really looked awesome. Storytelling is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, It kind of it helps you to keep track of where you are in the story, which is quite cool. And you kind of get a visual progression over the course of the series, which is quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Like you're saying the progression of everything, uh, it worked well. And, and the, you know, the directing on this show was pretty phenomenal. There was no point where I was yeah. confused as far as where I was really. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe you have some differences when it comes to canonical elements. I, I actually, I, you're probably not going to mention this what they are. look like Minecraft Jurassic <laughs> world. Where am I? <laughs> No, not that. No, but I mean, like you know, I you I think you're gonna mention stuff about the the canon, how how it might not line up for yeah. you. But like, I I never felt out of place or or you know at a, in a different uh, you know in a different story or disconnected from the main story or anything like that. Everything flowed well. It was directed well. Uh, I I think they nailed it here. So you know, I, and I know a lot of people are like, well, there's you know, you got to watch it early. Of course, you're saying that stuff. But like. Yeah. I, I, and we'll get to it at the end. I, I barely have any issues at all. Spoilers. <laughs> so yeah. I have like no issues with, 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 with the show really at all. So that's, you know, that's why it comes off as high praise because that's what I have, you know? Um, I so think I, I would say just to reassure people, yeah, I feel like I was quite cynical going into this. Um, mm-hmm. so you've heard me saying it. I'm like, it's a kid show. It's a kid show. I kind of let that downplay my expectations um, okay. And when I was watching this, I was pleasantly surprised and I had a smile on my face a lot of the time. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting that because I think <laughs> I had a very polarized reaction when Fallen Kingdom first came out. Um, sure. So it was nice to kind of experience something and just be able to enjoy it for what it was, you know, yeah. just kind of accept it for what it was there. I thought it was fun. All right. So 
this is this, this next point, the canon, right? We mm -hmm. want to talk about the canon. And I, yeah. I know that's something that a lot of people are really, really interested in. And, and um, you know, it, especially for the older fans and, and people who are really invested in the series overall, you know, if maybe if yeah. they're not a kid and they maybe can't get invested in, in a kid's show or animated show, um, the canon is something that everybody, I think, can latch on to and say, you know, what what's happening here? Does it connect? Um, and and honestly, I was I was very happy with the way that the canon you know works its way into the films and and stuff like that. I think um, you know as far as the the events of Jurassic World go, that was my number one focus. Like kind of going into the show was like, where does everything fit? How like they need to answer some questions here, especially ahead of time. And I will say that people. You know, still, I'm still seeing people confused. Uh, and I, I, I understand, you know, from our perspective and a lot of the fans perspective, like hardcore fans perspective, it, it's not all that confusing as far as where it slots in. But a lot of people are confused about certain things. Like literally just the other day, I I, I just saw somebody write like they just showed the, the island, you know, burning up in flames. What's going on here? Uh, and so I, I understand, you know, the, the plight of many people to say, like, I don't know what's happening. But when you actually watch the show, things fit in well. Um, yeah. The, the events in the movie fit in nicely with the show. And the way that they handle that, I thought was spot on. I thought it was amazing. I, I, every time one of those little moments came up where I was like, oh, now I know where we are. Like, I was just like. I was floored and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. I, I love that. That's the spot that we just tied it into. Um, so I, I know you maybe, maybe you had some issues with that. Well, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> there were a couple of moments that I can talk more about in the spoiler show. Sure. Sure. Um, where it maybe felt like it was a little bit squeezed. Okay. Um, like just kind of be, because obviously a lot of the events here are running concurrently with the events in Jurassic world. Um, there were kind of a few moments where I was sat there like, would that really be like that? Um, but I think you're right that it does match up pretty, pretty closely. Um, and if you're willing to cut it a little bit of slack, and if you're not as much of a nerd as I am when it comes to <laughs> all of the time frames in that film, yeah. um, then I think it sits pretty, pretty well. Um, and I will just say, I am out of anything when it comes to spoiler talk, this is the thing I am most excited to dive into because there are some really, really interesting nods, um, not only to extended canon here, but also a couple of really, really cool nods to the novel, which I did not expect at all. And I was kind of taken aback by one thing in particular, and I was like, that is cool. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited to talk more about this when we can. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the greater story of Jurassic... Um... You know whether it is the novels or, or you know the the first three films and and the the newer films, um, you know there there's so much connection to everything and I think that's really cool the way that they tied everything into the entirety of the franchise, um, and you know there's an there's an element in in the show that is also in Jurassic World live tour and you know yeah. I think that maybe the live tour handled that element a little bit like deeper. But um, it's it's nice to see like have little. To tell me what that is on the spoiler show. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'll get to that. But I think like I think I think either way they're both handled well. I th like I said, I think it may be a little bit better on the live tour, but um, a little bit deeper at least. So there's yeah. there's there's a lot of really really interesting stuff here and stuff that you're like you have to like use your you know your eyes to like look at the corner or like you know under yeah. something or you know you get really got to spy some of these little subtle cues um everything is just scattered throughout and i think like some of them are very surprising and you know even like all the way through the show like literally very very far into the show you're just like another one there's another one here's yeah. here's something really cool um so there's just this fun concepts and stuff just scattered throughout the entire things so canon wise very happy and i don't think anything you know was messed up at all i don't think there's anything you could say like oh well it's not canon because of that you know like there's nothing that really like you know dispels canon in every any way i don't think i know you you kind of yeah. maybe question some of the series of the events but i i don't really i don't think i really took any issue with any of that stuff and i think you know maybe if i like sat there with a watch and like you know timed everything out maybe it wouldn't yeah. but like even watching jurassic world Sometimes I'm like, well, wait, how did 
how did they this what why is that happening this way or how did they get from here to there and what's going on with the time here because all of a sudden it's nighttime and all this stuff but like so i i'm not too much of a stickler when it comes to that stuff I anyway i was thinking about that the issue that i had isn't even relevant because there is a time <laughs> jump in jurassic world so it, it really doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> so the canon's great guys don't worry about yeah. it it's all good <laughs> solid 10 out of 10 i would recommend <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, but um, I did my research for this show. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You've seen the movie once, right? Like uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That film called J J J J Jurassic Journey. Yeah, you know the titles. <laughs> um, trust me, guys. He know he knows what he's talking about. He he's the biggest <laughs> Jurassic World fan there is. Um, but yeah, as far as like you know stuff into the future, I'm really interested to see like you know, if anything else ties in and how, how other things will kind of connect dots. And, and yeah. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what happens next in a way. So let's move on to um, the music. And I know this is, you know, not something that I guess that you really noticed. Do you have, do you, do yeah. you know music? Do you know music at all? Or, you know, what, what's going I, on? I actually the just read the subtitles the whole time. That was how I got the dialogue. You had it on mute. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I was like, my parents can't hear me watching this early. I have to mute it. Um, <laughs> um, no, I I just didn't really notice it. I guess because mm -hmm. for me, I'm very much a visual kind of mm -hmm. um, cinema goer, and I'm always kind of looking for what's going on on screen. You know, like. I'm the kind of person who on my first viewing while somebody's focused on the main characters, I'll be looking in the corners for little details and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I was so caught up in that that I just didn't really notice the audio. But I think in that regard, that's actually a really good thing because I think you notice audio if it's bad. So um, a good example, I was watching earlier today, for example, the Alien Colonial Marines game everybody notices the sound effect for the pulse rifles in that because it's not the one from the film and it sounds ah, really okay. bad. So I feel like when it's something that's overt like that and it's obviously bad, it draws your attention. But the fact that it didn't suggest to me that it was tonally appropriate because it just matched sure. whatever was going on on screen. Yeah, and um, that's, that's kind of like good. a... That's kind of like another conversation as well is is the the use of sound effects and stuff like that. And I think, you know, with Jurassic, it's kind of something you expect things to be a certain way when it comes yeah. to a dinosaur's roar or or even not a roar. Some subtle noise that they make on the side when they're searching or hunting or whatever they may be doing. Like you, you expect these tones. Um, and yeah, they definitely nailed all that stuff. Like there was not a moment where I was like, oh, that sounds like the wrong you know <laughs> dinosaur thing like that didn't sound right um so they nailed that the music i think um you know the score itself was pretty beautiful i, I you know that's something that I, I will say that's something that i tend to focus on a lot um is yeah. the score and you know scores in general it kind of it can go the way that you're saying is you know if it's good it blends in nicely and and you don't necessarily notice it um but um I think that it, 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 you know, it did that fair share of stuff where it just kind of blended in, but it also had a lot of beautiful moments that stood out to me as well. Um, first off, I was really, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say that this is really spoilers or anything, but like I was surprised by the abundance of like Jurassic Park music, um, you know, yeah. scattered throughout the show. Like it wasn't, yeah, it was something that was heavily used. Um, and maybe even to the extent of it was maybe used more than Jurassic World themes. So that was, that was pretty interesting. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't take a ticker of like how many times this theme was used or that theme was used, but um, it would be, yeah, it would be interesting to go back and actually check that out and see which ones use where, um, hopefully we get a score someday. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, the, there was plenty of stuff that, you know, and love being used throughout the series it's to be expected, I think, you know, and it's all, it all sounded new. It sounded like they were, you know, reorchestrations of stuff yeah. that we know and love. Um, as well as, you know, there's a lot of, um, original stuff too that kind of fills the gaps and kind of gets you from point A to point B and also, you know, lead you into the stuff that you know and love. So I thought, I thought everything was really well done. And, you know, a few moments in particular where I was like, wow, that really made this moment even better, you know? And, you know, um, you know, even if you're not fully paying attention, I, I have watched this show several times now <laughs> and, you know, a few times it was maybe on in the background and I just heard, you know, like a little cue coming in. I'm like, Oh, that's yeah. this part. That's that, that really, really, awesome part um so you just keep an eye out or keep 
not an eye, an ear, <laughs> keep an ear out uh, for some of those really, really cool moments because they just yeah. really helped to make it impactful for me. And I, I thought that was pretty awesome the way that they, you know, weaved everything in. Uh, we have a lot of scores now, you know, throughout the five films, um, you know, the games, I know, you know, you mentioned Jurassic World Evolution before. That thing has a beautiful score and, and a lot of the other games as well. Um, it, Jurassic World Live Tours is kind of like in this sense where, you know, they reused a lot of the stuff that we know and love, reorchestrated it, and then added their own stuff. And I, I love that as well. So this is another one to add to the list of really, really great scores. So yeah. good job, guys. Good job. It was, it was awesome. It was I might awesome. have to rewatch it and just, yeah. I think, my yeah, and I think like when it comes to Jurassic, you know, you you have dinosaurs, you have some of these really awesome characters, you have islands and vi like cool visuals, but you have music, you have John Williams, yeah, uh, Michael definitely. Giacchino, Don Davis, you have these really really you know big names in music, so um, it's something it's that part of the brand stands out to me. At this point, you have those expectations, mm -hmm. and I feel like again it goes back to the fact that this really does kind of tick all those boxes for what you're expecting from Jurassic. Yeah. Yeah, if it didn't have a John Williams theme or or a Michael Giacchino theme, it'd feel out of place, right? Like it would just feel yeah. like it wasn't fully Jurassic. And I said it earlier on, like it feels Jurassic, everything about it, and and all the way up into the score. So, uh, yeah. So this is our last bullet point here, guys. We have yeah. uh, we have something we want to talk about, and it's the issues of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. So, I've got so Tom, issues. <laughs> so, so what are your um, potential issues here with, with the show? Did you find anything that, that you were struggling yeah. with that you haven't already mentioned or do you want to expand upon anything? So I'm going back and forth on the canonical bit still in my head because I'm like, well, uh, it does make sense, but it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um so I'll, I'll talk about that more in the spoiler section it's kind of it, it more boils down to um i i suppose the common sense of how i think a situation like the jurassic world incident would be handled i'll put it down to that um sure, moving sure. past that um i think that the pacing is a little bit fast at times um i'll be honest i forget if it's six or eight episodes eight. um <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was eight. Um, I was sat here like, is it? Um, the last I, two I, I went so like... fast for you, you completely forgot. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in my defense, I've only watched it twice. So, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it went through certain scenes quite quickly. Um, and I feel like perhaps there isn't as much of the park as people would maybe be expecting or would be wanting from this. Um, but at the same time, I can see why it moves so quickly, because there is a lot of story to kind of wrap up in eight episodes, especially mm -hmm. when you look at, say, Clone Wars, which is 22 episodes in a season. Yeah. This is like nothing compared to that. Yeah. So they did have to do a lot of pacing to kind of make that work. And I think lastly, the thing that's not really an issue for me, because I quite like the way it's done. Um, but the thing that I think might be received a little bit not negatively, but it might take a while for the community to warm to it, is the fact that this show does retroactively add some things to the law. Um, and I think you kind of just need to look at Fallen Kingdom with the inclusion of Lockwood to see how a few people reacted to that. Um, so I'm hoping perhaps people will be more accepting of this this time around. Um, sure. But it is very much a case of kind of building from the past forwards again, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, I I've always I've struggled with that, you know, with the new series as well in a yeah. certain sense is just saying like, hey, you know, this was a part of the thing that you've known this whole time. Sometimes I'm I'm yeah. okay with it, and other times I'm like, well, come on, like that's a little cheap. <laughs> um, that being said, I I don't okay, think I. Me, <laughs> that being said, I don't think I had any kind of issues like that. I, I think anything that, you know, like you're saying, it, it helped you in a way. It, it It's good for you. I think it was good for me too. So I don't really, um, I, I may, I guess I could see if people do have an issue with that, they could take issue, but yeah. um, it didn't really bother me. Um, and like I said, I didn't really have a whole lot of issues, but like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, you know, and this is something that like a lot of shows and a lot of, you know, movies deal with is like, well, would those characters really make some of these choices? Would this really go yeah. down this way? Um, and it's not necessarily a huge, you know, problem in my book. But I think, you know, like you're saying, people might take issue with like, oh, the characters are dumb or, you know, just generalizations that you see a lot of the time is like, oh, they're stupid characters. They don't, you know, they, they can't handle a simple situation or something. But I think 
I think that it mostly it's handled well. Sometimes you're just like, Oh, what did, why, why did that happen? Um, and, and this one, I, you actually kind of, I think touched on it earlier. Um, yeah. And it's, it's hard. It's very hard to, to discuss like how, what I'm talking about, <laughs> but yeah, at times, no, yeah. at times things can feel familiar to certain things that we've, you know, I think I before. know what you mean. I'd phrase it as it hits very similar beats to some of mm-hmm. the films that we've seen. Uh, yeah, it, it just hits similar beats. Um, yeah. So you know, we have we're See, starting we're starting to get a larger universe here. You know, it, it's starting. So we, what do we have? We have uh, this show. We have Camp Cretaceous. We have five films. Mm-hmm. We have um, the, the, ev- the the evolution of Claire, the battle at Big Rock. Um, and uh, you know, I, I like to think TV show in the works. Uh, man, maybe I, I like the uh, I like the live tour as canon, and I think there's no reason why it yeah. can't be. Um, so <laughs> you're gonna die on that hill. <laughs> I will. I will always say it. Yeah, but um, you know, there's gonna start to be, especially when you you stick around these certain instances. Um, there's gonna be some retread of certain things. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's up to Colin to be like, you know, oh, it's not canon anymore. Things aren't canon, or whatever. You know, this is the first moment that we're seeing this thing. I don't know. But um, yeah. you know, we'll we'll dive into this this particular event um, maybe a little bit more in the spoiler edition when we get to that. Um, yeah, but sure. you know, and I don't even necessarily think it's all that bad. What I'm trying to say here, um, just wanted to point out there there are elements that you'll be like, oh, that's you know. That's interesting. I feel like we've yeah. maybe touched on on that a little bit before, um, and yeah. and how that how that thing maybe how we can expect to see that kind of thing in the future. Very vague. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> that's all we can do. Um, I was going to yeah. say you have actually reminded me. There is one particular moment that I do want to talk about when we do our spoiler show, uh-huh. um, which is, and I think you know what I mean. There's one moment that's over dramatized to the point where it doesn't make much sense. Think about mm. it and I'll talk to you after we're done recording and it will make sense. Okay. Maybe I, I don't know. I'm not sure which moment you're yeah. talking about. Um, I, you know, adding to this, man, we're just going to sit here and come up with issues and issues. No, yeah. it's not going to happen. But there, there's, there are, there are moments where you're like, um, man, that was a bit intense for yeah for for what's for what this is in a way um so yeah that that happens a few times and i'm like okay i mean sure why not but like i don't think that would really happen that way um or you know whatever but uh enough of the issues because we can't really even talk about them um (laughs) so there there's slight issues i guess you could say but nothing really nothing like we said nothing that canonically takes you out of it breaking yeah there's nothing that's just like oh i can't watch this because jurassic world did it differently or or whatever so everything is very minor um and i I just had a great great overall time with this show i thought it was pretty awesome Pretty, yeah, it was pretty awesome from start to finish. And like I said, I've seen it a few times now, and I can I can definitely see myself watching it a lot more times. Um, and this is something that, you know, we're going to be talking about. Like, it matters. Yeah. It feels like it matters. It feels like there's a lot to discuss and a lot to decipher. And I think, uh, you know, as far as the Jurassic Park podcast is concerned, we're going to be talking about Camp Cretaceous for many, many years to come. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it slots right in there with with everything that we've seen. And I think they completely nailed it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I think we've, we've heard that there might be more coming. So I, I'm very excited to see what, you know, whatever does happen. Hopefully this does well for everybody involved. Um, I love it. And I can't wait to see what happens and, and, and what the reaction is and what, what yeah. fans around the community are thinking. And I can't wait for people to call in, 732-825-7763. Uh, let us know what you think about the show when when it does happen. <laughs> oh, we're getting a voicemail right now. Let's check it out. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk with everybody out there about what everybody thinks. So do you have any final words before we uh, wrap it up here? Do you uh, want to say anything else? Yeah. Um, i just like to echo your thanks at the start to obviously DreamWorks, Netflix, Universal, mm. Um, Amblin and everyone else it's been a real privilege getting to work on a lot of content around this show um, ahead of time so we can have a lot of stuff ready for people Um, I think that it's really exciting to see them 
really embracing this franchise and being willing to take it in new directions and to try new things. Um, and thank you to you, sir. You sitting right there with the, with the baseball cap on backwards for what setting all of this up because it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining me, man. It's been awesome. And, you know, we have a lot of stuff planned. Uh, we're, we're trying to get this stuff done for you guys so you can uh, check out all the content. So, Tom, I know you have a uh, a non-spoiler written review as well yeah. over on our website. So uh, definitely go check that out. It's pretty awesome. And I believe you have a, a video review as well, right? Like a, a short yeah. video review? Yeah, it's like um, a short format. I think it's four or five minutes just kind of breaking it down and sort of summarizing everything um, yeah. that the show is. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, stay tuned for all the spoiler stuff because we're going to have a lot. Like it's going to be, it's yeah. going to be pretty big. We'll, we'll have a big, you know, a big old summary. We'll, we'll have, you know, probably episode breakdowns and uh, we do have some, some interviews coming. So you'll get to hear from Scott Creamer and Aaron Hammersley, uh, the producers on the show. So that'll be awesome to hear from them. Um, and, you know, I feel like we got to start up the live watch parties again. You know, that was a big thing. You know, during the quarantine. I'd be down for joining. Yeah, you got it. You got to figure. Yeah, we got to get a good time for Tom to join us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to start watching these things with you. Maybe you know, I don't have it all set up just yet, but uh, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll, we'll all talk about it this week and figure out where we can do that. So, without uh, you know, holding everybody up for too much longer, where can everybody find you online if they want to talk more about the show? Hit me up at Tom Jurassic on Twitter and Instagram, and also stay tuned here on the Jurassic Park podcast. Yep, like we just said, there's a lot of stuff coming up. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you want to follow me, I am at Brad Jost. You can follow us at Jurassic Park Pod on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Podcast on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Join up on our Facebook group. Answer those two questions to get into the group to chat with us. Um, very exclusive place, guys. You got to answer yeah. some questions to get in. Uh, go to JurassicParkPodcast.com. Uh, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're also, uh, you know, an audio podcast, so you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you listen to podcasts, everywhere out there. Am I missing anything? I mean, subscribe and, and like this video. Comment below. Do all that good stuff because we love everybody here on YouTube as well. So yeah. thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you to everybody for letting us have the chance to watch the show. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy Camp Cretaceous when it comes out on September 18th. Enjoy, everybody. Enjoy, everybody.